And speaking of, of potential earnings plays uh, that blew up at earnings, and again, I, I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm definitely, definitely watching. And guys, you should definitely set an alert on SPLK on the bottom range here, because if this thing starts confirming the bottom range here. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome uh, back to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Uh, last time we spoke uh, was the weekend update. Uh, I had to kind of go MIA uh, after the close. I didn't have time to kind of re record the video the last couple of days. My wife was out of town, finally came back. Kids activities, just way too much uh, things to do to kind of fit in the video. But last time uh, we spoke was a weekend video and uh, the market's kind of a little, little quick review. Uh, after a small rolling top that had a pretty good, uh, pretty good trading environment back to the downside, on Friday, uh, the market did uh, a very good job. The bulls did an incredible good job of reclaiming the five-day moving average and going into uh, this week, you know, we were pretty bullish. Again, anytime you reclaim uh, the five-day moving average, that's the shortest-term sentiment. The shortest-term sentiment is going to give you a pretty good view of what's about to happen next. And if you rewind uh, the weekend update, we talked about, you know, don't get too creative. Stick to the names uh, that had uh, good earnings. They were just resting, never went down with the market. They were just consolidating some sort of catalyst that's been kind of going sideways and lead the way. And we talked about uh, a lot of names, right? We talked about a lot of names. For example, uh, we talked about Qualcomm, and we talked about uh, RBLX, and we talked about uh, TTD. Again, again, these were the names that were very, very strong, and all they needed to do uh, was to confirm macro, and that's exactly what they did. So when the queues uh, opened up trading for Monday, and again, this is kind of where we were uh, the last time we, we recorded the video, we started a pretty good aggressive cycle for the last uh, two, three days that had a pretty big run in the market. And a lot of names uh, did incredibly well. Semiconductor names were on fire. Uh, again, RBLXs of the world and the TTDs and the Qualcomms of the world uh, went absolutely nuts. Even Tesla uh, that was you know being sold over and over and over again. Because again, nobody really knew uh, how much stock Elon Musk really sold or how much mu uh, stock he really had to sell more. But there was you know there was chatter going around that you know they were trying. And again, whether it's true or not, we have no idea. We, there's, there's absolutely no way for us to know. But even even with Tesla, there was chatter going around that they, you know they they approached Tesla approached an investment bank or two to kind of place the remainder of the shares with their institutional client flow. Then instead of just sitting there, you know, selling every day, we don't know. Again, we don't know if that's true. You know how chatter starts. We don't know. But the point is, I, I think Wall Street, uh, the Wall Street community, the, the aggressive buyers in Tesla, the aggressive permabills and bulls, that's all they needed to hear. And it was like almost like. A, a relief, a sigh of relief. And once that news started circulating, you saw this pretty aggressive reversal on Tesla yesterday. Uh, and you can see the common denominator, how the Qs reclaimed the five-day moving average. And so did Tesla yesterday, right? They reclaimed the five-day moving average and really had this uh, incredible run today. Well, again, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. But you had this really good market run uh, on the Qs for the last three, four days. Um, you know, the market got a little tired today. Uh, you saw the Dow down a couple hundred points. Not a big deal. Uh, you had a four-day run uh, in the queues. A lot of names that had big, big runs kind of rested today. Not a big deal. The question is, how long can they consolidate, right? Tomorrow's Thursday. Uh, Friday, obviously, is option expiration. A lot of weekly speculation money is going to come in, into the options market of the hot stocks. So, for example, RBLX, we talked about it two weeks ago. You know, they were coming in for the 125 uh, and the 135 short term expiration. Well, look where the stock goes. And we saw today they were coming for the end of the month 140s. Uh, a name like Qualcomm really took care. And again, all these stocks have the same common denominator. They all took out uh, the earnings highs. You can see how Qualcomm took out the earnings highs here. RBLX took out the earnings highs at 110. Uh, TTD took out the earnings highs right over here uh, at 98, and they started to go. So we started watching for other names kind of the same way 
both to the upside and to the downside. We actually, I, I highlighted uh, a name I really, really like, but not to the upside, uh, to the downside um, in Zebra, right? In uh, Zillow, you know, we talked about it on the video, you know, go, kind of go back to the weekend update. We said, listen, this thing is a matter of time that this thing finally cracks uh, the earnings lows. Well, this thing cracked the earnings lows yesterday, closed below 63 and put up a beautiful, beautiful move. I still, I still think this thing has uh, more room to go. The, the cool thing, again, kind of review uh, the, the sentiment behind this. The cool thing is when a stock really breaks their number, right, to the upside, has a strong quarter, there's usually a grind to the upside for several weeks. Well, same thing to the downside. If you look at any stock uh, that blew up in, into earnings for the last, you know, even the last couple of quarters, <clears throat> You'll notice the same thing. They blew up their earnings. They tried to rally, and once they took out the earnings low, uh, it started you know a few weeks worth of selling drift, and that's exactly uh, what's happening on Zillow. And that's exactly what happened on Fubo. If you guys remember from the Thursday video, it took out the 25 level right to the downside of the earnings lows and started you know started trickling down lower. So a lot of these earnings plays that get blown up uh, again for all you guys who are looking for you know high probability uh, high probability scenarios, just wait for them to kind of uh, confirm their earnings lows or their earnings highs, and you should get a pretty good trend uh, that's going to follow for the next uh, few weeks. So going into tomorrow, look, th th there's definitely some names uh, that I like. I don't love, right? I don't love. Um, we'll talk about on the video in a second. The video uh, came out with earnings, um, you know, not bad, not bad earnings. Uh, I'm watching right, right now, uh, trading the after hours. There's a big uh, reload seller there around the 305, 309 area. It's coming very, very close to uh, a macro break. And what's cool about uh, what we're looking at right now in NVIDIA, we definitely have an upside channel that we're definitely watching for tomorrow. But if that up upside channel gets stuffed, and so far uh, it got stuffed after hours, then well, we have a pretty definitive channel uh, to the downside as well. So again, you don't need many names uh, to look at, especially if a market is in kind of a rest mode, just for one day. I'm not saying the market's in rest mode. I think a lot of names have big, big runs you know, might have a little bit of a rest. So you have to kind of go for other value here. So we have at least a definitive channel uh, back to the upside in the video, back to the downside in the video. So that is definitely uh, in play there. Uh, you look at a name like Tesla that had a big, big run here, got rejected. I, I didn't like the fact that they got rejected uh, and closed below the 10 day moving average, but at least we now, we know our next leg up. And that's very, very important. That's today's channel. You can see here it stopped perfectly into supply on this uh, upper band here, which is very important. Now, if it starts filling in this band, again, who knows if it will or when it will, but if it starts filling in this band, and again, then you have, you're talking about a 50, 60 point potential, if and then, you know, we'll see what happens. I have a feeling the way this whole Tesla saga is gonna play out, the same way that Elon Musk tweeted out uh, and said, hey guys, do you think I should sell 10% uh, of my position? And he ran a poll, which is insane, but he did. Um, I think the same way it's going to kind of, I wouldn't be shocked if he turns around and tweets one day, well, I finished selling my stock. And you can see the stock just go back to uh, 1200. I have a feeling, you know, if there's an opening line to the movie that he already started, you have to have a closing scene. And I have, I have this sneaky suspicion based on his ego and uh, how he likes to troll uh, people all over the place. I do believe something like that is going to uh, kind of manifest itself uh, into the future. What's going to happen tomorrow, the next day, next week, we don't know, but I have a feeling that's how uh, the next leg of Tesla uh, will begin. So going into tomorrow, um, yeah, there's some names I like. Um, let me give you guys some names. There's definitely some names I like. Uh, I definitely like Apple. Uh, Apple, you know, had a nice move today out of the channel here. If it could just reclaim today's channel, as you can see here how it stopped uh, perfectly at the linear regression line. If it could reclaim today's channel, you'll have more upside ahead. Obviously, we're watching NVIDIA. Um, I like this BLDR. Um, you know, I was watching a trade today, uh, not the thickest stock in the world, only traded a little bit less than 2 million shares, but you have a, definitely a definitive channel here uh, that, it, you know, if it confirms, it never sold off today with the futures. That's a good sign. Uh, it's a long distribution now. If it could confirm the top of the channel, um, I think you could see a 72 figure there. Uh, as well. Um, I like this Abby, right? Abby, again, pretty same kind of looking chart as um, 
uh, SBLDR, you know, kind of going sideways here. Uh, you know, let's watch the top of the channel here. Maybe we get a nice little move. And speaking of, of potential earnings plays, uh, that blew up at earnings. And again, I, I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm definitely, definitely watching. And guys, you should definitely set an alert on SPLK on the bottom range here, because if this thing starts confirming the bottom range here in the next few days or so, even next week, you're going to have the same scenario as you saw with FUBU, earnings lows confirmed. Uh, now that you're having with Zillow, earnings lows confirmed. And if this thing confirms this bottom channel here, you're going to have the same uh, effect. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Um, you know, you had some really aggressive moves. You had some names also topping out but also, again, it really demonstrates how strong the market continues to be. Uh, BLDR, again, I like it for tomorrow, never confirmed today. Uh, DDOG, you know, only spiked up, you know, only spiked up a little bit. It wasn't a big move at all. And then it had a really uh, aggressive sell-off. So it took out this 95, uh, traded up to this 9760s. Uh, only in 99 had this really ugly, ugly uh, reversal. But again, nice little pop there, nothing crazy. Uh, Netflix, I wanted Netflix. I love Netflix. We saw 700 call buyers coming in on Netflix at the open. I know some of you guys got it. I missed it. The way they ran this thing up, it felt like they ran it up on air, on no liquidity. It literally went from 691 uh, to like 702 again it was just crazy crazy quick unfortunately um i didn't get it look, look at this candle here it took out the 691 area and a one candle went to 701 it was just way too thin for me unfortunately uh i wasn't able to get it uh airbnb you know quick little scalp here 210 went to like 212 and change uh nothing crazy so it took out the 210 uh traded to like 212.50s before it sold off as well uh mxct i still like ua i still like never confirmed um uh, yeah zillow so zillow the, the swing started yesterday first close uh, below 63. Here's my note. 63 continues to be strong support. If it builds below, it can start a multi-week, not a multi-day, multi-week decline, confirming earnings. It closed yesterday at 62.80. Confirmed today at 62. More sellers should come in, and they got killed. They got killed. You know, you had a nice little orderly decline. All, it went all the way down to 59.70s. I, I still think this thing probably sees uh, mid 50s before this thing kind of stabilizes. I still like it lower tomorrow. Every 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 move up today got stuffed very, very quickly into lower time frame supplies. This was a monster, monster move. Congratulations for all you guys who traded this thing. This is not my thing, but congrats for all you guys who took it. Uh, ON, ON, 4680, 47 needs to build. I don't know what the hell this thing is, but if you took it, congratulations. This thing went absolutely insane. Uh, went from basically 47 to 56. Hey, you guys should have told me it was going to go to 56. I would have bought it with you. So rude. Anyway, good job. All, all jokes aside, uh, good, good job here. Tesla continues to be an absolute monster. It was a huge pivot yesterday. Uh, again, guys, forgive my dyslexia. Everybody knows we were talking about 1058 uh, and 1060, not 1158, 1160. Again, my dyslexia kicks in. Uh, Tesla went absolutely nuts uh, again today, uh, day two. So here is the 1058. That was basically uh, yesterday's highs. See that 1058 yesterday's highs. So it started building 1058, 1060, and it, it just absolutely exploded all the way up to the 1118 supply. Uh, now again, we know our next move up. So keep an eye on Tesla. Big boom move. Uh, HD went nuts second day in a row. Again, here's another perfect example of earnings. Did really well. Confirmed the earnings and now starting its multi uh, multi week run. Uh, 394.50, 395.00 needs to build on Home Depot. Here is Home Depot. Right. So it took out. Uh, it took out the 95 area and went to uh, basically 400. Had a really nice move there uh, as well. Uh, ONNN take on the way up. Nice spike on Depot. Uh, 1090. It was supposed to be 1090 next supply. Obviously, again, dyslexia. Uh, Apple 5320 needs to build. 55 weeklies came in. Traded right to 55. Uh, AMAT still watching. Never got there. Uh, Apple's tier take on the way up on Apple. 55 on deck amazon never got up there and that's it right here it is uh you know here's uh, my my notes continuing from zillow uh 61 on deck pair some off on the swing uh let the rest walk down might see 50s next week that is 
uh, the plan. So good to be back, guys. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, again, there is some value out there tomorrow. Hopefully, in the video, will give us a clear channel. Hopefully, hopefully Tesla will wake up one way uh, or another. But I, I don't think tomorrow is going to be a big, big macro blow off. Everything goes nuts. But I still think, especially in this environment, there's still good places you can still turn to, especially in a technology name as many of their former runners that have big, big moves, especially in the last several days, kind of rest. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Good to be back. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.